وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This is our fourth episode and inshallah ta'ala in this episode I want to speak about those who say when they commit sins إن الله غفور الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is very merciful and how that falls under al-amnu al-amnu min makrillah to feel safe and secure from the plan and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we say to that person you're right Allah is ghafurur rahim in that statement of yours you are right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafurur rahim but Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is also shadidul aqab He's also severe in his punishment. Why have you chosen one and abandoned the other? Why have you relied on only one and not the other? The believer, what he's known for is that he takes all of the nusus together. He takes all of the evidences together. He doesn't partially take some and abandon others. The people who did that are deviated groups in Islam. The murji'ah, they took the ayat of hope and they abandoned the ayat of fear. They are a deviated group who started from a man by the name of Al-Wasil ibn Ata and Amr ibn Ubaid and their likes. And then the Khawarij came and they took verses which were uh, severe in punishment. And they referred to those verses that talk about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they relied on that and they abandoned the verses of hope. And then the Sufiya came and they took the verses which talk about love and they abandoned the verses of hope and the verses of love, uh, the verses of punishment. And Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, when they saw that, they remembered and reminded others that the Quran consists of those three, fear, hope, and love. And they took it all together. They didn't choose some and abandon some. The first group to go evil in that was the Khawarij. And then the Murji'ah followed and then the Sufiya followed. Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they worship Allah upon fear, hope, and love. So we say to that person, Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. You're right, Allah is forgiving, and Allah is very merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But He's also severe in His punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Nabbi ibadi anni ana al ghafoorur rahim. Allah says, Inform, Ibadi, my slaves, that I am the forgiving one. And that my punishment and my hellfire is very severe. Allah Ta'ala's punishment and his adab is very severe, and his forgiving is very vast. You need to combine between that two. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah says, I'lamu, no. And Allah shadid al that Allah is severe in his punishment. And that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is one that forgives and that one is and one that is very merciful. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is shadid al severe in his punishment. And he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ghafoorur rahim, one that is merciful, one who is forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says in another verse, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ Allah 
Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, He is Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, who made you khala'if al-ardi, the successes of this world. Allah made us that. And He also placed some of us over one another. وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ Darajat. Allah gave some of us levels over others. لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ So Allah can test you subhanahu wa ta'ala فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ In that which He gave you. Allah is testing the one that's on top. What is He going to do with that? Is He going to abuse His power? And the one that is low, is He going to be patient and in, endure? After that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala He says إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيعُ الْعِقَابِ Verily Allah tabarak wa ta'ala what? إِنَّ رَبَّكَ سَرِيعُ الْعِقَابِ وَإِنَّهُ لَغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah combined between the two. Verily your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fast in His punishment and He's verily one that is forgiving. Saying Allah is forgiving in Allah غَفُورُ rahim, jumping with that. When you're not doing any righteous actions and you're not repenting, then you are falsely uh, attributing to the verse a meaning that it doesn't have. You're saying Allah is going to have mercy and forgive me for my sins when you're still consistent upon it. Allah mentioned in the Quran that He forgives the ones who repent and the ones who come with righteous action. Allah says, Allah says, I am one who forgives, but I'm forgiven to who? Liman Taba, the one who repents, rectifies himself. وَآمَنَ and believes. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا and comes with righteous action. ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى and then becomes guided. That is the one Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala forgives. Allah is telling you here subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to believe that Allah is going to forgive me subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst you're consistent upon sins and then you jump the gun by saying إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ You are giving the ayah a meaning, a tafsir that it doesn't have. You're saying Allah is going to forgive me whilst I am not repenting, whilst I am not coming with righteous action, whilst, and that goes against what the Quran mentions and also what the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu mention. Allah says, The great Shafi'i scholar Ismail ibn Muqri, he said a few lines of poetry are very powerful regarding those who say Allah is forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is merciful whilst committing sins he said taqulu ma'al isyani rabbi ghafir whilst you're committing the sin you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving we say sadaqta walakin ghafirun bil mashiati he said you've told the truth Allah is forgiving but with his mashia he forgives who he wants wa rabbuka razzaqun kama huwa ghafirun your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is razzaq. He is one who provides, he gives to his creation and he nurtures and cultivates them as he is also one who forgives. So Allah has a quality of being razzaq and that's a characteristic of his, which means he gives to his creations rizq. He is also ghafir, yani he's forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلِمَ لَا تُصَدِّقْ فِيهِمَا بِالسَّوِيَّةِ Powerful point here. Which is why do you not then believe in both of them samely, in the same way? What does he mean by that? He means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides for you, is he not? And Allah is the one who forgives you. Why is it that you, whenever you're committing a sin and you're doing crimes and you're not repenting, you're not repenting, you jump the gun and say Allah is ghafurur rahim. You say in Allah ghafurur rahim. Whereas when you are uh, not working and you haven't got a job, you don't say Allah is Razak. He provides. He's going to give me my provision and you sit back and do nothing. You don't say that. You work. You exert effort and hard work and you say Allah is Razak, but I also need to work. So the same way is the name Ghafir. Allah Taala is forgiving, but you still have to repent. You still have to come with righteous action. فَكَيْفَ تُرْجِي الْعَفْوَ مِنْ غَيْرِ تَوْبَةٍ So he goes, how is it that you hope for forgiveness without repenting. But you don't hope to be provided for without exerting the effort. And then he points out something again important. He says, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the promise that he's going to make sure that he provides for everyone. Allah mentioned that in the Quran. He says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There is no individual on this earth except that his provision is upon Allah. So Allah ta'ala, he promised that he's going to provide for everybody. وَلَمْ يَتَكَفَّلْ لِلْأَنَامِ بِجَنَّةِ But he didn't promise everybody Jannah. The Jannah, he gives it to whoever he wills. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ He forgives whoever he wishes. He takes to Jannah for whoever he wishes. Allah mentioned the Quran, فَمِنْهُمْ شَقِيٌّ وَسَعِيدٌ There are those who are noble and they're going to enter Jannah. And then those criminals who are going to go to the hellfire. So Jannah is not promised for everybody. وَمَا زِلْتَ تَسْعَى بِالَّذِي قَدْ كُلِّفْتَهُ وَتُهْمِلُ مَا كُلِّفْتَهُ مِنْ وَظِيفَتِهِ But you strive to the one that you were promised that you were going to be given. And you abandon the one that you're not sure if you're going to get it. Forgiveness is not something you're sure whether you're going to get it. But rizq is one that you are definitely going to be given based on the ayah وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Allah is going to provide for you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Powerful points, wallahi. It's a contradiction on behalf of that person who's running around, looking for provision, working hard, exerting the effort, getting a job, trying to maintain that job and get a good income from it in order to provide for himself and his family. But when he does a sin, he goes, Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. But if you believe Allah is ghafoorur rahim, which he is subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you should believe it, he is. But he's also razzaq, he's one that gives and provides for his creation. Why don't you sit back, relax and not work? You'll be like, no, but I, I need to work and I need to rely on Allah as well. We'll say the same is when it comes to forgiving. You have to also work. You also have to repent. You also have to do righteous action. And then hope for Allah to forgive you subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you sit back, brothers and sisters, and you relax, and you hope to be forgiven, you're trying to achieve success without taking its path. Abdullah Mubarak, he said in a line of poetry, تَرْجُ النَّجَاةَ وَلَمْ تَسْلُكْ مَسَالِكَهَا إِنَّ السَّفِينَةَ لَا تَجْرِ عَلَى الْيَبَسِ you are hoping to receive success. You're, you're wishing to get success. But you're not taking its path. The path to forgiveness, which is success, has a means. Repentance, righteous actions, you know, guide, looking for guidance. Those are the means of gaining the forgiveness of Allah. So you're hoping to get that, but you're not taking its path. Verily, the boat does not sail on dry land. No, it doesn't. The boat, if you want to go to a destination, you can't say, oh Allah, I, I want to try this route and I want to drag the boat on the, on the, on the earth. You're not going to move it far. You're not going to get far. Do you see? So what do you have to do if you want it? Even if the destination is long, you still have to take the sea or the ocean. It needs water. Okay? The person who says Allah is ghafoorur rahim and does not repent, just says it in Allah Ghafoor Rahim, Biduni Tawbah, without any repentance, is like the example of this is Kamar Raja Waladan, is like the one who is hoping to have a child and he wants to have a child Wama Nakah and never got married. Wa Kamar Raja Hasadan Wama Zara. And it's like the one who's hoping he's, for his vegetations to come out. He wants to harvest the uh, earth uh, and his uh, garden, uh, but really hasn't planted the seeds. You didn't plant the seeds when others were doing it. And you're hoping that when they pick their crops, you could do the same with them. That's the same as the one who says, Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim, without repentance and righteous action. He's like, كَمَا الرَّجَى وَلَدًا وَمَا نَكَحْ وَكَمَا الرَّجَى حَصَادًا وَمَا زَرَعْ a person wants to have a child without getting married. How are you going to have a child without being married? And how can you hope for crops and vegetations and fruits when you haven't planted the seeds? You've got a garden, you want it. To, you can't. You have to put something in to exert effort. And that is an important message I want to send to you all, inshallah ta'ala. I am going to stop there for now. Uh, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect, is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdih. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.